U.S. markets were down today, as you, I told you at the top of the show, and the reason was anxiety over the huge investments in AI. It was the software giant Palantir that reported solid earnings, but the shares fell more than 8%. And as you can see, the rest all went down with it. Well, not as much, but they all went down. So some held their nerve, but not surprisingly, Intel was, a, was another brunt off and Microsoft held its nerve. Wall Street is worried about the sky-high valuations and even Michael Barry of the Big Short revealed he was betting against Palantir and NVIDIA. Uh, you can see they're all down. Today's market pullback comes after record highs and solid gains in October. Largely, it's all AI. And that's been good news for Cisco, which produces networking, hardware and software. A key player but not in chips, per se. It's in the infrastructure and new platforms that aim to speed up the processing. It's called uh, the Cisco Unified Edge. The device uses an Intel chip expected to be available by the end of the year. There's a load of racks that they're putting together. A lot of it's agnostic as to which chip you want to use because uh, Jitu Patel is the president and chief product officer at Cisco. He's joining us as you would expect via Cisco WebEx, uh, which is good to have you, sir. And um, the interesting thing about you, and we'll come on to valuations and, and, and why you think, but the interesting thing about Cisco's AI play is that largely you're agnostic as to the chips, as to the players, as to the infrastructure, because essentially you want to be the backbone, you, you want to be the plumbing, the bogs and the drains, as we used to say, of whatever system is finally put in place. We are, we are definitely the infrastructure provider in this movement. Richard, firstly, thank you for having me on the show and it's, uh, it's great to be here. And you are correct that we are pretty agnostic on what models customers use, what GPUs they might use. We have partnerships with all of them, but um, we work with all of these players in the market so that we can make sure that we can further the cause of AI. Right now, if you look at what's happening in AI, it's constrained in three areas, Richard. The first one, is it's constrained in infrastructure. There's just not enough power, compute capacity, and networking bandwidth in the world to satiate the needs of AI. So that's the first constraint. The second constraint is a trust deficit. People just don't feel like these systems are safe and secure. We build safety and security systems for AI. And the third is a data gap where people don't always have the right core tooling to make sure that they can harness the most amount from their data that they have that's proprietary data to get them ahead. And we help with all three of these areas. And when you put that into the context, you, but you're just as vulnerable if the AI bubble has been overinflated. And when I say burst, I, let's just say there's a dramatic pullback in spending, that is going to hit you too. Well, the way I think about this right now is in any such major mega trend or a platform shift, you're going to have some companies who might have frothy valuations, mm. but there's industries that are going to get created as a result of this movement. And, you know, Cisco is providing infrastructure. We provided infrastructure during the Internet age. We provided during cloud. We're providing it right now. So we're just providing the underlying infrastructure to make sure that these things continue to keep humming for all classes right. of customers, from hyperscalers to neo clouds to sovereign clouds to service providers to enterprises. And so we have a lot of kind of uh, but, diversity in our customer base that helps out. But I do remember looking some months ago, I, I seem to recall, I, I had to look at the Cisco share price back in the dot com boom and bust. And a lot, and it was as dramatic the fall. Yes, of course it recovered, but it fell like everybody else. And I guess that makes you as vulnerable in the short term, like everybody else. Well, I don't want to comment on share price, but I will say that the, the volatility, the, the volatility right. that some of the other players in the market experience. Cisco is a very steady company that's actually continuously sure. just kept executing quarter in, quarter out. But we just have a slightly different profile than what someone who's actually had right. a huge run up over the course of the past few years. How far, and this is a bit like asking you how long is a piece of string, how far 
Do you think we are into this AI revolution? And, and I, I, you know, people talk about it being overvalued and this and hype and blah, but if we do look back to dot-com boom and bust and internet, the gains came, but the market just was pathetic at timing it, as in sales and productivity, as indeed it is now. But where do you think we are in this revolution? Well, if you were uh, in America, I'd give you a baseball analogy, but given the fact that you're from the UK, I'll give you a cricket analogy. Oh. If you think about 50 overs in a match, I think we're probably at over number two or three. There's, wow. We're still in the very early days, Richard. And um, there's so much that needs to still get built out. There's so much potential that is there to go out and um, um, impact every industry. We're in the very early days where people are starting to see the definitive potential of the technology, but we, have, we are nowhere near having close to realized all of it yet. So I think we're in the early days. And the wider, you know, at the beginning of this program, uh, you, you may not have heard it, but our lead story tonight, as well as the elections in the US, has been this report that shows dramatic inequality and the, the increase of inequality. Now, the, 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 ro the road we are taking will give those of us who've got more, some of us will have more leisure, but entire workforces are going to be destroyed in one way or another. Do you think we're ready for that? Do you think we're prepared for that? Let me actually take a step back on what you said earlier, which is the inequality. I think AI is one of the force multipliers for creating equality, because what it does is it levels the playing field. And when you start thinking about, you know, jobs getting lost, this is, this is a very active dialogue going on right now where people are worried about AI taking their job. My, um, my perspective on this is that it's not AI that takes your job, it's someone that uses AI better than you that you should worry about that takes your job. And in fact, the way that we should be thinking about this is not that AI is gonna take our jobs, but what can we do to make sure that we use AI to do our jobs more effectively. And in fact, over the course of the next few years, it'll be unfathomable for us to actually do our job on a daily basis without AI. So I'm, I'm of the opinion that you know, there's a lot of um, areas where people say, well, let's, not, let's eliminate entry level jobs in businesses. Right. I think that's one of the most erroneous strategies that companies can take because that's the injection of new talent. Richard, if you compare someone who is 20 years old and how they use AI, and then compare that to someone who's 30 years old and use AI, it's radically different. A 30-year-old uses it very transactionally. They might use it by saying, let me make this a search engine that's on steroids. A 20-year-old thinks of it as a companion, thinks of it as a brainstorming partner. And I think there's a lot for us to learn from the new generation. I have a 14-year-old oh. daughter. The way that she uses AI is very different from the way that you know someone who is um, a, a person like me who's been around for, for ages and ages. So I do feel like the strategy of not bringing new talent into the workforce yeah. is a flawed one. Uh, we're at, we, we have to pause and, and say thank you, but I, I'd like to get a commitment that you'll come back and talk about these bigger issues um, again, because this is this is the future that we are talking about, and, and you have great insight. Will, will you come back to. again? Good. I'd thank be honoured to. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Excellent.